Hey friends, I'm here with Serintip. Serintip? Oh no, I already probably said it wrong. <laughs> Serintip is fine. Yeah. Serintip. Um, we are doing an online interview today, so let's get into it. Uh, Yay! Let's start with uh, just your your background, um, because mm -hmm. from what I've seen, your cultural background has influenced who you are as an artist a lot. So where are you from? Let's start there. Um, so I was actually born in Bangkok, Thailand. And then when I was 11, I moved to Sweden. So my mom is Swedish and my dad is Thai. And then I've been living in New York for almost five years now. Okay, wow. So do you speak Thai, Swedish, and English? English, yes. Wow. Yeah. It's a power trio. Uh, and what's your, <laughs> what's your musical background? So um, I kind of started playing my first instrument when I was nine. I played piano and violin. And then I also played some Thai instruments. Um, and later on in high school, I started to play double bass for a while. So I've, I played a lot of instruments, but I, I started to sing when I was just a kid, just, you know, singing along in the car. In Bangkok, there's a lot of traffic. So I had a lot of time to sing in the car to whatever was going on. Um, but I actually didn't start in taking lessons until I was 16. Um, however, when I was um, nine or 10, my mom asked me if I wanted to, you know, um, apply to a bunch of music schools in Sweden, elementary music schools. And it was kind of like if, if I got in, we would move. So I went to Sweden and, um, you know, I flew by myself from Thailand to Sweden. And at the time it was like an 11 hour flight and to be 10 years old and flying that far by yourself, you felt pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> so I did that flight, did all the additions, got into the school. So we did decided to move. And the school I started at was called Otto Fredrik's Musikklasser, uh, music classes. And it was a music elementary school where you had choir singing seven hours a week. Um, and all the kids in the school could sing. So for me, moving from Thailand to Sweden to start at this school was like starting at Hogwarts. And Harry Potter came out at the same time. So it was like, oh, I'm going to all this school with all these wizard kids, you know. And it was the coolest thing ever. And that's just kind of like where it actually catapulted for me to stay with this as like a, a thing for life awesome i'm a little bit jealous actually i wish my <laughs> elementary experience was that music focused and then did you get post-secondary education as well for music so after i went to the music elementary school for music i went to music high school for a jazz voice so that's when i actually started to focus on the voice as my primary instrument and then I, so in Sweden, you can go to something called a pre-college, but the pre-college in Sweden, it's after high school, before college. It's not like a thing you do while you're in high school. It's, it's a thing after. So, and usually these pre-colleges are in the middle of nowhere. So I was in this town in the South of Sweden where they had like 20,000 people. And the only thing that was fun that you could do on the weekends was to go to the pizzeria. There was literally nothing, just crops of canola, and you know fields forever um but the music school we had there they had a music like building with studios and rehearsal rooms that were open 24 7. so we would have like six hours of ensemble a week and then just rehearse and practice and play for the rest of the time for two years wow with no distractions it was great oh my um, goodness yeah and you can definitely including myself hurt yourself because you're just you know on your instrument all the time yeah yeah that, that's a factor <laughs> yeah um but it was great and then after that i went to the royal college of music in stockholm for my bachelor's degree and then i applied for the masters of music in new york at the manhattan school of music wow and you so you've are you in the masters of music or is that complete it's completed yeah wow so oh, wow. a lot of music education. You got a <laughs> lot of potentials. And at what point did you start? Because you focused on jazz throughout that. Was there a time when you started focusing more on the uh, the electronic instrument um, inf influence side of that? Um, so I've actually never really s like studied electronic music. That part of me, my musicality is self-taught more or less. Um, I did do one Ableton class in my master's, 
um, at Manhattan School of Music. But otherwise, I've, I've, it's just been all driven from an, a passion and curiosity. And I think a lot of it started from, <clears throat> A, that I've always loved pop music. Like, Sweden is a pop country. So you can look at Max Martin, you know, he's written, like, all the greatest songs. <laughs> and... Um, but then the other part of it is also that in with a jazz tradition as a jazz singer, it's so common that you know you sing the head. Once you're done with the the head, you might take a scat solo or not, or you just let everyone else solo and then you sing the head again. And for me, that was so bizarre and so boring. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be more involved with the music and be able to use my voice more like an instrument. So I was very very influenced by Bobby McFerrin. Um, so what I wanted to do was like, okay, how can I try to contribute to my band without taking away from the musicians? Mm. So the idea was like, oh, if I have pedals, then I can create these sounds um, and camouflage my voice and decide when I want to be a singer, a lead singer in the, cent- in the center of attention or when I just want to accompany. Um, so you're so, really treating your voice like an instrument. Exactly. So actually my first pedal this one. Oh, a good choice. Yeah. So I got the TC Helicon Voice Live Play back, I think it was like 2009. Wow. So 11 years. And did you start looping with that as well? No, I, I didn't get into looping immediately. Um, I, f- I felt like the knob were a little tricky. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did... Um, I used a lot of the reverb stuff and the harmonizer yeah. options back then. Mm. And was that around the time that you, because you got noticed by the band leader from Snarky Puppy, right? Is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And were you using that setup or were you doing a more traditional? Um, so I met Michael Lee, the band leader of Snarky, back in 2012. So yes, I was already using the pedal. Um, and I had a band at the time called Molo. This is okay. a super deep cut. Not a lot of people know about Molo. So <laughs> you're, map after. you're one of you. Um, and it was kind of like, we called ourselves that we were playing indie soul. So it was like neo soul, but not really. And, um, so Michael like found, found our band and really like what we did. And then later on, I, I released an, an EP in 2015. Yeah. Um, after... I did the Monk competition, and the combination of those two, I think, made Michael ask if I wanted to do a record with him. Mm. And that's what uh, resulted in Tribus. Exactly. That's what caused Tribus. Mm-hmm. Mm. And how will we talk? Is it okay if we talk about Tribus a sec? Um, what was the What was the process like for writing that? Did you do a lot of the instrumentation? Um, so I, I did write a lot of the, I wrote all the songs, Mm -hmm. some of them by myself, some of them with different friends. Um, and, um, I think the instrumentation, the the whole concept of blending in Thai instruments started already with my first EP that I Mm self-released. Um, so what I did there was that I went to the Northeastern parts of Thailand and um, met with a bunch of traditional musicians and oh, asked wow. them if they could play. And then I re- like sampled and recorded them with a little you know, Zoom recording. Mm-hmm. And then we put it into Logic so we could actually play it as like MIDI instruments. So on the record, there are these um, influences of Thai instruments that we just you know played in. So Michael played one of the drum grooves. It's with Thai drums, but on an SPD. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So that was one of the ideas of like you having Thai instruments to connect with my Thai heritage. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think the rest of the instrumentations with like synths and stuff that a lot of that came from the music I've already released mm-hmm. and the vibe I have, I guess. And yeah. then also just like Michael's genius brain. So were you using this pedal setup on Tribus? No. mm um, there's actually a hilarious photo I can send to you later. So Michael is one of the reasons why I, you know, got connected with you guys at TC Helican, mm-hmm. but also at another company called Earthquaker Devices. Yeah. 
So at the end of one of the songs called Emperor of the Sun, it's like going crazy. It's a bunch of sounds. And then a lot of those sounds are, it's Justin Stanton on keys, but it's also my voice. Mm. <laughs> so Michael just literally just connected a bunch of pedals on this table. And then we were just, I just sang into a mic and then we were just playing with the knobs. And that was when I was like, whoa, I can create this many sounds. And then that's that's where it started. That's where it started to go bad and heavy. <laughs> My pedal board is I'd so say, heavy now. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, it looks. How about we talk about the pedal board? What's your what's your order of effects here? So my first pedal is actually the TC, because that's the one um, the TC Perform VE, mm -hmm. because it helps me connect the microphone with an XLR cable into the pedal. Yeah, because it has the quarter inch outputs. Um, it has. Like yes, so the, the, yeah. the so those can go into the rest of the board, but basically because all the other pedals are guitar pedals, it's hard for me to go from a microphone with an XLR into straight into a pedal, and also because of other noise stuff, the TC is just like a great starting pedal. And when I do master classes or whatever, um, especially for my female students, I tell them that the TC Helicon pedal is like the foundation. You know, it's like the thing that you first put on your oh, face yeah. to make it smooth and nice mm -hmm. before you add like the eyeshadows and stuff. That's a good analogy. <laughs> yeah, so it's just using... like... Sorry, continue. No, it's just the, the pedal that I always use. Mm -hmm. So it's never off at all. And do you use any of the, the MIDI of Harmony effects or the looper? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So I for the TC Perform VE and why I've kind of moved over to that one instead of the um, the voice live play is because of the drum machine mm -hmm. and the the vocoder. Yeah. So I have a MIDI keyboard now connected into the Perform VE. Yeah, I see that on this. And do you have the drum pads connected as well? Um, no. So the drum pads of the Perform VE is just on the Perform VE. Oh, we have a we have a recent software update that'll let you trigger it from pads if that's. Oh really? You'd like? Yeah, I can I can send you the information on that. It's in uh, from oh. two point but. That would be great because sometimes it's hard to play with just these two fingers. Yeah, the you little know? button corners can be tricky. Yeah, it's yeah, it's hard to be accurate sometimes. Sweet. Oh, that's really cool. And then, uh, what does the VE go into on your board? So then the VE goes into this pedal from Earthquaker Devices called the Swiss Things, mm. which is basically um, it helps boost the signal and it like they say that they they work with um uh, what is it called then noise suck <laughs> so oh. it takes away noise suck because if you have a lot of pedals then at the end of the chain you know your original sound going in is not going to be as clear yeah so this this pedal just like makes sure that everything is the same quality as when it first went into the first perform ve pedal yeah, and it also has these circuits where I can um, turn on and off multiple pedals at the same time. Yeah. So I don't know if you can see in that photo, there's like um, loop one and loop two. So those are actually not loops. They're just like I have all the reverb stuff or delays on loop two. And then I have all the, um, I have the pitchfork, which is a, a uh, harmonizer, but based off intervals, a mm -hmm. tremolo and distortion on loop one. So I can like turn them on and off at the same time. Sweet. Yeah, which helps when you have a lot of buttons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an easy solution. We're hoping to add effects loops to our our products because that would be really handy for people with this type of setup. Yeah. Um, so you're going... Can we just talk through how you use each pedal? I think that would be really interesting. Mm -hmm. if that's interesting to you. Um, because especially the pyramids in the rainbow machine are pretty crazy. And I'm curious how yeah. you would uh, use those frequently live. Yeah. So the, the pyramid and the rainbow machine, if we go back to the makeup analogy, 
Mm -hmm. Those are literally like the colors of the petals itself. It's a bright pink and a pretty bright purple. You don't yeah. use it all the time. You pick your moments. Mm -hmm. That's how I view them. So I don't, let me see if you can hear any of this. But this is me using the pyramids. Oh, is it ramping up in speed? That's really cool. So I was, I was moving the, the feedback knob and the the rate knob at the same time oh manually okay yeah um but it has a bunch of really weird effects oh wow so actually with the drums it can be pretty cool cool so you can get like a really like pitch shifted wobbly glitchy yep that's awesome yeah it's, it's really really cool um and then the rainbow machine has a similar thing but it it kind of feels more like it's going into like this dreamy cloud mm -hmm. so this is just like if i just trigger it it's just weird <laughs> and funny but then there's something called a magic button. And when I trigger the magic button, you really just go into space. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I've so never. Sorry, Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I've never heard that used on vocals. Um, <laughs> that, that, that sounds like a lot of fun. We got to get one of those in our office for testing purposes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is very, very fun. And like I told you that I... I've always wanted to be able to contribute when I'm playing live with a band, but without becoming the center of focus. So before I used any pedals, if I was just trying to accompany like a guitar player with my voice, just like, ah, or whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. then people would think that I was trying to sing. And they would just be like, why is she not singing louder? Or like, no, why is she doing that? That's distracting. But, you know, if I just go, Whoop. yeah, then it's people don't even know that that's coming from me mm -hmm. and it's I, f I feel like i can i can do more to add to the overall music landscape but without stealing attention when it's not about me yeah that's awesome that's a it's a humble approach to um <laughs> it's a jazz approach you yeah, know yeah the many would say the correct approach um <laughs> at least at the music schools I've been to. Um, <laughs> and then the Avalanche run is just acting as your ambience there? So yeah, the Avalanche is a, it's a delay pedal. Hello? 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 Hello. Hello. Oh, so you're cha you change the delay time live and get those pitch shifting effects. Exactly. Hello. 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 So if I move it, if I move it, if I move it. Oh, that's sweet. Um, so that one is great too, and you have a tap trigger on that one. But um, when I've been doing some looping now with Ableton, I actually use the delay in Ableton more because then it's perfectly in sync with the click. And even oh, if I try yeah. to, you know, tap it now, it's it's not going to be as in time as like, you know, a digital delay Yeah. where I can sync it. Um, but I like that I can play with those time knobs and just play with the sound. So there, it kind of works for me in the same sense as the rainbow and the pyramids. Yeah, but it's, it's more like a color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then, so that's loop. That's one loop is those three pedals. So I also have the afterneath on that one. Oh, yeah. And which is a big reverb. Yeah. How does that sound on a voice? And then you can drag. Is that just quickly changing the... Yeah, the size drag. of the space? Yeah. Well, actually not the space. You're just like kind of dragging the reflection. 
So it's almost similar to a time knob. Oh, okay. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like a big delay almost, like a, with a bunch of tiny repeats. That's really cool. So that's loop one, and then loop two is your overdrive tremolo and, and pitch? Exactly. So um, what I have here first is the, the pitch fork, which I love because I'm a woman, and sometimes I want to sing a bass line, and I don't have that register in my voice. Yeah. So... Um, like if we would do, dun, 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 you know, Billie Jean. Mm-hmm. And that's really cool because when mm-hmm. I loop it in, it sounds like an instrument. Mm-hmm. And you normally just use an octave or do you use the intervals as well on that? Yeah, so th- that was actually two octaves down. Oh, okay. This would be one octave. Oh, okay. But I also use like the fifth. I I mean, it's kind of like what Casey Benjamin, who plays with Robert Glasper, does, is to improvise with the fifth below. Do, 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 um, which is cool. Yeah. And then sometimes actually an octave up, um, with some reverb is pretty too. <laughs> That's going into the hummingbird. That's uh, let me see here. My my cables are not that the best, and also it's tricky with you know the different sides that the the cables need to go in. Yeah. Um. So let me see here. Where do I go? Um. Uh, no. So that one goes into the tremolo, the hummingbird, and then yeah. the hummingbird goes into the Westwood, the distortion pedal, and mm-hmm. then it goes back the brain of the Swiss things. Yeah. Um, so the hummingbird is just a tremolo. Mm-hmm. So actually with the octave up on the pitchfork and the afterneath, uh, they get pretty they get pretty together. Very synth like Wow. And do you do you keep it generally at a fast? Because I've heard uh, I've heard in demos you use the fast a lot. Do you do you often change the time on the tremolo or do you kind of? Yeah. So I was actually playing that one now. Um, The rate I I like to play with the rate knob. Mm -hmm. Um, So I kind of go between slow and fast. But it's, I think it's just easier to hear the faster ones mm, because definitely. there are more of the the attacks yeah. and the, mm, you know, to get that. Brrr. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <clears throat> yeah. And the last one is a distortion pedal. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Let's do that. This is the distortion with the fifth down wow so this gives you that like guitar Mm -hmm. you know distorted guitar sound you can just take a solo with it exactly which is what i do (laughs) yeah um and do you so how would you use say the vocoder and the ve into the pedals what would that do you think you could demonstrate something like that um yeah so um um let me just think what i do so once again i don't use any of the crazier stuff on the perform ve just because i already have a lot of craziness on my board so the perform ve for me kind of works more it's just like the thing that just can make me sound good. Oh, <laughs> um, but um, but I'll try to do a loop. I'm just curious about how the perform ve sounds with the craziness on your board. Yeah. Combined. Um.
that is the drums from the perform VE. Wow, that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so that was kind of like, you know, starting with the Perform VE and then adding a bunch of things. Yeah, I mean, you you have said it yourself best. Uh, your your voice is used like an instrument with that rig, and I love it. That's, Thank you. Uh, I'm going to listen back to that. I'm so excited. That was so awesome. Thank you. So... You've, you're involved in this live live music festival right now, right? Yeah, we just had our last day on Tuesday, so it's over now. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> but you're still but, doing workshops and live performances pretty frequently, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the festival is a festival and fundraiser, actually. So it was running April 1st until April 7th, and we had artists like Chick Corea perform, and Bill Frizzell, and John Patitucci, and Linda O, oh, and, and, you know, Antonio Sanchez, 
um, and it's been like an amazing thing and we've been so crazy happy and surprised about the response that we got from all these artists that they wanted to you know donate with their time and talent for the cause um, so they played and you know we raised a bunch of money we actually raised I don't know how much it is today but we've raised over fifty thousand fifty five thousand dollars wow congratulations which is really cool thank you so that money is going now to help New York musicians who've lost work due to the virus. Mm -hmm. um, the application just closed, but the the online sh concerts will still be up until April 15th. Okay, so people can go and donate still and watch the concerts. Exactly, exactly. Awesome. And um, we're planning you know, to do other things on the platform. So the website live from our living rooms will still be up and running and you know, hopefully we'll, we'll put up some, you know, maybe do some interviews like this or blogs or, mm -hmm. you know, master classes and collaborations just to kind of keep everyone connected because now everyone is so isolated in their bubbles. Mm -hmm. And I think the world really needs a platform to connect more than ever. Yeah, definitely. So we're trying to do that for the audience and the artists as well. That's awesome. Uh, so we'll we'll have a link down below to where you can all watch the festival and donate, um, mm -hmm. and and we'll keep posting on our socials whenever you share something because um, we're just yeah. so excited about <laughs> what you're doing. I'm doing a masterclass on Sunday actually mm -hmm. on the Snarky Puppy uh, page. They have a Crowdcast account, so I'm doing a, a masterclass on pedals for non-guitar players oh, for non-guitarists that'll be good um is that is that yeah. gonna be live or mm -hmm. it's gonna be live will the video stay up after the stream yes. likely oh sweet yes but please tune in because that's that'll be fun yes sweet so do you have anything else you're wanting to talk about what's going on uh that you're releasing uh do you have new music on the way yeah, so I just released a new track that's more of the electronic mm -hmm. music vibe um, a week ago, I think, with in collaboration with Evan Marion, who is an amazing bass player and composer and producer. So that track is out right now. It's called Clara O. Okay, where is that um, available to listen to? Is that on all platforms? Is yeah, that... all platforms. Sweet. Yeah, so if you go to my Spotify page... I've pinned it as like a new song to check out. Oh, there it is, Claire O. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And um, besides that, I have some other music with him coming out and a couple of other artists that I've collaborated with. But then I'm also working on a new record myself. Ooh, yes. That, uh, that I'm going to be recording with uh, Michael again next year. Awesome. So yeah. you're still in the writing phase for that? Yes. yes. Nice. But we'll definitely have a lot of vocal effects and still, you know, elements of Thai and Swedish in there. And the the record will be a based off the concept of climate change. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I think this is a good place to wrap. Um, thank you so much for your time. Uh, everybody check out um, Siren Tip's Instagram and her live shows that she's doing. Also check out her new music and her upcoming music. But just genuinely, thank you for this. This means a lot to uh, us. And um, we're just so happy that you keep using the Perform VE um, and that you've you've just uh, integrated it into your fantastic live setup. Um, so thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, you too, Robbie. Yeah, happy to be a part of the fam. <laughs>